Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. My name is Deacon John Moore, a member of our deacons ministry here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church in Wilmington, Delaware. We're so thankful this morning that you have connected with us and worshiping with us today. Our motto here at Cornerstone is we love, we care, we share. It's a family affair. Our focus is grace and mercy. It simply means being open to the power of God working through us. Our pastor is Reverend Dr. Donald Dunnigan Sr. Pastor Dunnigan is not only our pastor, but he's the founder of this church. But what I admire most about him is his leadership ability, his outstanding leadership ability, his preaching ability, his teaching ability. Pastor Dunnigan has a gift of being able to, uh, to communicate and preach the Word of God in a way that's understandable from the oldest to the youngest among us. And so if you have any young kids out there watching on YouTube or Facebook this morning or watching this service, we welcome them into our service this morning as well. And so on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Donald Dunnigan, his wife, our First Lady, Regina Dunnigan, our deacons, our trustees, and all the members of our church, we invite you into this worship service today to sing with us, to pray with us, to uh, shout with us, and to rejoice with us in the good news that God is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Thank you again for worshiping with us today here at Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are here today to worship the Lord, to bring in the service. We just ask that you sing with us, that you, you praise with us, and that you pray with us as we prepare to usher in the service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy.
Let us pray. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him, I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me glad. He's my friend. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day just to worship you. Another day, Lord, just to worship you, to lift up your holy name, to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, because you're truly worthy to be praised. Lord, what would we do without you? Lord, you keep on blessing us day after day after day. Morning by morning, new mercies we see, Lord. So many of our members, our family members, we've lost during this past year. So many of our church family members we've lost this year. Lord, and we, we miss them, Lord, and we're saddened by this. But Lord, what would we do without you? Lord, so many of us within our church family, so many of us are, are just hurting right now, Lord. We're just going through so much right now. We're struggling. We, we, some of us don't feel well in our bodies. Some of us are, we got members of our family in the hospital. Some of us have lost our job, can't pay our bills, got trouble in our home, don't know which way to turn. But Lord, we thank you that we still have you to fall on. We still have your word to lean on. Lord, we thank you for your word that tells us the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Lord, we thank you for your word that tell us that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Lord, we thank you for your word that tells us that, 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 that uh, you would never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, we thank you for being able to worship with us this morning. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Dunnigan. We pray, Lord, for him. We thank you, Lord, for giving him a word each and every Sunday to give to us and to impart to us to strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Oh
Father, we thank you once again for this privilege of hearing your word, of sharing your word, of presenting it, that it goes forth and accomplish the purpose for which you desire it to accomplish. Bless those who are here, open our ears and our hearts to receive. We pray and ask these blessings in Jesus' name, amen. We've been working through a series on the power of the names of God. And there's a passage of scripture that I'd like to share with you today. It comes from out of the book of Philippians. It's probably a familiar passage of scripture out of the book of Philippians chapter four. And it's one of my favorite passages of scripture. One of them, I have several, but this is one of those favorite passages of scripture that I like to share in those moments where life just throws us a curveball. And beginning at verse six, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. You think about the peace that Paul is referencing here. And I think about when I hear people refer to, they have peace. And one of the things that I wanna share with you today is that the greatest misunderstanding about peace is that we think we know we have it when we haven't yet found it. Or let me say it this way, we think we have found it when we really haven't found peace. And the reason that I say that is as I search the scriptures and I'm excited to share the word of God with you today because the word of God actually captures the stories of real live people just like you and I. Sometimes we read the Bible and we think that these are holy people, saints that are different from our lives, but they're regular people just like you and I. And, and, and what we discover in these regular people is that they have the same challenges of life that we have. They're trying to live their life in a faithful way to God, and yet they miss the mark. Sometimes they hit the mark, and they've shown us through the Word of God how we can improve our lives. And so today, as we focus on this concept of peace, there's a few things I want you to, to kind of grasp. First is that peace is it, peace zigzags. Peace is not something that goes in a linear sense, in a linear way. Peace is not something that you have it and then all of a sudden you know that you have it. Peace isn't quite like that. Peace comes in so many ways and so many forms. There is physical peace. There is social peace. Uh, there is inner peace. There is uh, spiritual peace. There's so many different forms of peace. And sometimes when we think we have peace, we really haven't discovered this peace that Paul is talking about, the peace of God. The misunderstanding comes when we really don't think that we should have problems if we have peace. I'm going to share with you a story from out of the book of Judges, the sixth chapter in the book of Judges. And in the sixth chapter of the book of Judges is a, is a, is a man that is really referred to as a judge. And his assignment was to lead the people of God from a place of despair to a position of victory, a place of defeat and bondage to a place of victory. And, and this is the way it happens. It's the book of Judges chapter six. And I wanna, I wanna share with you what happens. It's the call of Gideon and God calls Gideon to be a judge. And I want to begin in verse 11. It says, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Oprah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Ebiezer. Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, mighty man of the Lord, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, 
If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midian, uh, to the Midianites. I want to share with you that whenever you find yourself in a situation where you just can't quite figure out where God is. Have you ever been there? You haven't been able to quite see the hand of God moving in the midst of the situation and you were seeking and searching for peace and yet peace seemed to have been so elusive. That's, that's what I wanna deal with today because as you read the scriptures, you see it happening all throughout the Old Testament as well as the New Testament where people are seeking to find the presence, the hand, the covering of God over their lives in the midst of the turmoil that they find themselves surrounded by. It happened in the Old Testament, it happened in the New Testament, and it happens even today. I was reflecting on some of the turning points in which peace was evasive. It was one is when the generation of the apostles, remember Jesus had the 12 apostles that were walking with him. Well, eventually those apostles died. And when the generation of the apostles ended, the church was trying to find out who is going to provide authority for us now? How are we going to make it? What is going to become of this group of people that we are connected to right now? It was a turning point for the church. They were trying to determine how do we find peace in the midst of the absence of those who were providing guidance and leadership for us, those who were providing the word of God to us. Again, you see it in the, the old, uh, after the uh, the, the passing of the generation of the apostles. You also see it with the Donatist revolution. And I think about that, that controversial where there was a persecution that was happening in the Roman church and the church was scattered all throughout the place. You would think they were once unified, having a, pro a profound impact on society. Now the Romans take over and those who profess to be Christians are being threatened. Their lives are being threatened. The, the pastors and the preachers were running and, and trying to preserve their own life. And eventually there was this group of preachers who said, hey, listen, if you denounce Jesus Christ, if you denounce God now, then you are not worthy to administer the holy sacraments. You are not worthy to preach the gospel. You are not worthy to be called a child of God. And, and so there was persecution that was taking place amongst those who once had professed to be bishops and leaders and pastors and teachers in the church. They were looking for peace. I think about the events that happened in our society even this year in January, on January the 6th. I would say after those events, it has left America with a major problem. And that is how do we now go forward as a nation unified in peace? How do we find the peace that keeps us together as a nation? See, peace is so broad to when we talk about peace, there is political peace, there is social peace, there is national peace, there is spiritual peace, peace in our homes, peace that comes in our communities. We've marched numerous times. We had a march just a couple of weeks ago, marching, trying to advocate for peace in the streets, peace to end the gun violence. The question is, how do we find this peace? Well, let me just say that sometimes we look for peace on the surface. We think just because there is not a war going on that there must be peace. No, that is not the kind of peace that Paul is talking about. That is not the kind of peace that the angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon as Gideon was threshing on the wine, uh, pressing wheat on the wine press. Here's what God says to him. He says, peace be unto you. See, the first misunderstanding is we think we can find peace, but I believe that the truth is we don't find peace, peace finds us. I love this. The angel of the Lord, listen to this, in Judges chapter six, 
it says, then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Oprah. Now, you have to understand the angel appeared to Gideon and said to Gideon, mighty hero or mighty man of the Lord, the Lord is with you. And Gideon's response was, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Isn't that interesting that sometimes we believe that if we are in a place of turmoil, if we are in a place of confusion, that God is not with us. And yet here is God saying, Gideon, I know exactly where you are. I know that you are hiding from the Midianites. I know that you didn't think anyone could find you in the condition that you are in. And yet I have found you and I'm bringing peace to you. That's what God does to us. God brings peace to us. And when God brings peace to us, he often brings peace, not just to us, but he brings peace to us while we are in the middle of our turmoil. Happens over and over again. Think about that. You may have been seeking peace. You've been longing for that sweet peace and, and, and you've been seeking for your circumstances to upside, to, to reside, to, to step away, to get out of those situations and things that are causing so much pain and burden in your life. Or oh, if you holler, if you hear me, if I'm talking to you, just say amen. See, what happens is when God allows us to be in situations such as what Gideon is, God knows who you are. God knows your name. The question is, do you know God's name? The angel appeared to him and called him by name. And then he also called him by title, man of the Lord. God knows that you are able to endure the circumstances that you are in, even while you are in the midst of turmoil and trouble and trials and tribulation. God knows where you are and he is the one who will bring peace to you. Now, here's what happens. If you want to receive the peace, you not only need to know that God is, you don't even not only need to know about God, but you need to know who God is for yourself. And when the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon, look what he says. He says, uh, sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Oh, my Lord, have you ever been in that situation where you were wondering God, how did I get here? How did this happen to me? How did this happen to us? How did we get into the place where we are right now? If God is the one who's overseeing our lives and where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about. Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? Sometimes we get so hung up on what God has done that we forget to remember who God is. When I know that God is Elohim, that he is the creator, when I know that God is Jehovah, when I know that God cares about me, when I know that God created me, when I know that God has a purpose and a plan for my life, it shapes the way that I experience my circumstances because you can be where God wants you to be. And when you are where God wants you to be, you can still have trouble and still in the midst of the trouble, you can have peace. See, peace comes from knowing God. Someone said it like this, no God, no peace, no God, no peace, no God, K-N-O-W, no peace, K-N-O-W. But if you got no God, N-O, God, you have N-O, peace. Peace really is coming to knowing God in all of his fullness. When you understand that God is a warrior, that he can fight 
your battle, that he is Jehovah Sabbat. When you understand that God is Nisi, the one who is your banner, who goes before you in the midst of the battles that you have to fight. When you understand that God is Jehovah Roy, who can see you where you are. When you understand that, the God, that God is the Jehovah Rohi, the one who is able to lead you as a shepherd, leading his people. When you understand that God is Jehovah Shalom, that he is your peace in the midst of turmoil, you can still have peace. And not only do you have peace, but you have peace that passes all understanding. Isn't that amazing that you can love God, you can know God, and in the midst of all of that, you can still have turmoil. As a matter of fact, I happen to have a controversial thought floating through my mind as I'm speaking today, and that is that we often want peace to deliver us from turmoil. We want peace to rescue us out of our troubles. But I believe that peace is actually a prelude to our trouble. Ooh, what do you mean, Pastor? I believe that God gives us peace before we go into our troubles so that while we are in our troubles, we come to learn that God is able to deliver us from no matter what the circumstances are. I think of it in this term. Uh, peace is like the space between the notes. If you take the space out of the notes, all you have is just a bunch of notes coming together like this. But when you put the proper space, the proper piece in the midst of the notes, the notes represent the trouble. When you put it in the right, you can say, when peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. The man who wrote that, wrote that after receiving news that he had lost his family on the sea. And in the midst of losing his family on the sea, he said, when peace like a river, what does the peace like a river do? It comes to me when it attendeth my way. See, I believe that peace finds us. We don't find peace. Peace finds us and peace finds us when we learn to place our faith and trust in God. I'm talking about Jehovah Shalom, that kind of peace. The God who finds us while we're in the wine press. The God who finds us while we're recovering from cancer. The God who finds us while we are working through the grief of the loss of a loved one. The God who finds us when our loved ones have gone away. The God who finds us while we are in the midst of family turmoil. The God who finds us when society is going crazy, the God who finds us while we are in the context of trouble, trials, and tribulation is the God of peace. We don't find peace. Peace finds us. And peace finds us when we place our focus not on our problems, not on our trials, not on our struggles, not on our pain, not on our circumstances. But here's what Paul says. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. You know, I was listening to a song this week. It says, ain't no worries. I got everything I need. It was a blues song. Now, some of you are going to get a little upset about these lyrics. He said, ain't no worries. I got everything I need. He said, I got liquor when I'm lonely and I got a lover that's good to me. Ain't no worries. I got everything I need. He went on to say, I got shade when it's sunny. I got a sofa when it rains. I fire up the furnace when it's cold again. I got cigarettes and soul food when I'm all alone. Ain't no worries, 
I got everything I need. That's really not the kind of peace that Paul is talking about. Paul is talking about, don't worry, not because you got everything you need for your physical, but you know something about a God who sees you in the midst of your loneliness, the God who sees you in the midst of your struggle, the God who knows that you are doing everything you can to survive in the midst of your circumstances. That's where the angel of the Lord found Gideon doing everything he could to survive in the midst of his circumstances when he had given up hope. And it's the difference between being complacent and having peace. Gideon didn't really have peace, but God found him. And this is the reason why, you know, he didn't have peace. He said, where is the God that our ancestors told us about? Yes, I'm down here trying to make it on my own, but the God that I heard about has abandoned us. That's not peace. When you know something about God that he will never leave you or forsake you, you might have uh, circumstances that are not in your favor, but you know you still have peace. Why? Paul says, because don't worry about instead pray to who? To God about everything. Tell God what you need and then thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace. That's what Gideon did. When Gideon found out that he was struggling and he confessed his issues to the angel of the Lord, he recognized at that moment that he had been in the presence of someone who had given him peace. And he says, I have seen the Lord and I am not consumed. He says, I'm going to call this place Jehovah Shalom. I want to encourage you today to find your place, that experience where you can discover the peace of God that passes all understanding. You won't be able to explain it, but you know what it is like when you experience it. It gives you a kind of wholeness and assurance of knowing that you are in the master's hand. And yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you won't fear any evil because God is with you. His rod and his staff, they are comforting you. I pray that you are comforted today by the word of peace that God desires to visit upon your spirit and upon your heart your mind and your soul today. He shows up. Gideon had a choice. He could either entertain this angel who had come to him, or he could have simply ignored the angel who had come to him. He could have rejected the call that the angel came to place upon his life. But God knew something about Gideon as God knows something about you. Even before he shows up to bring you peace, he knows that he's placed in you a spirit of valor, a spirit to fight the battle and not give up, a spirit to hold on to hope, a spirit to know that if you try, God will strengthen you. If you cry, God will wipe the tears from your eye. If you run, he will give you the strength to keep on running and not faint. If you pray, he already knows he's prepared to hear you. I love the Lord. Why? He heard my cry and pitied every groan. Long as I live and troubles rise, I'll hasten to his throne. He knows what he's placed in your heart. You don't know who you are yet, but God knows who you are because he made you. And when he visits the peace upon you, as he is doing in this preaching moment today, simply be ready to receive the peace of God that passes all understanding and it shall keep your heart, your mind and your soul. May God's peace be your source of strength, not only today, but in the week and the months ahead. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are Jehovah Shalom. 
You are our peace. You find us in the midst of our turmoil. You find us in the midst of our struggles, our troubles. Sometimes you even allow the circumstances to put us in a position to receive your peace that you desire to deposit into our hearts. We can't understand it, can't explain it because it is such a deep peace. It is such a, a deep assurance of, of knowing and connecting with you that it's hard to tell anyone how we can maintain our minds, our peace in the midst of our circumstances. And yet we've been there. We know what it is like when you have found us in these places before. So we come before your presence to say thank you. Thank you for the peace that you are dispensing even through this stream on this day. We thank you for those whose hearts are opening up, those whose ears are prepared and receptive to hear and receive your word. And ultimately we pray that it would result in transformation in the lives of those who have not yet discovered the fullness of who you are. We pray that their hearts will be open, their eyes will be open to see you and the beauty of your majesty. We pray and ask these blessings upon each one in Jesus' name, amen. For those of you who may not have yet come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to share with you the value of knowing the Lord as your Savior. There is no other name under heaven whereby men, women, boys, or girls can be saved. There's something about the name Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. It's something about that name. That name is able to not only give you peace, but that name is able to give you salvation, where you have peace not only in your heart, but you have peace in your soul. You have peace with God. You're no longer wondering if God is going to receive or accept you as his own child, if he's going to provide his providential care over you. Once you say yes, he will embrace you and receive you as his very own child. God, I pray that you, if you haven't yet done so, would accept him as your Lord and Savior. Here's how you do it. All of us have sinned. In other words, we've missed the mark. We haven't done everything that we should have done. And even those who are now Christians, I know you've probably seen people who profess to be Christians doing some things that you wouldn't think a Christian would do. But we have all come short of bringing God the glory. And the truth of the matter is you have too, all of us, I have, and you will continue to do so. But the good news is that the Lord sees and looks beyond your faults and he sees your need. And so if you're here today and you desire to be connected with Christ, simply repeat this prayer with me. Dear Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner, that I have fallen short of doing the things you've called me into this world to do. But as of today, I'm confessing you as my Lord and Savior. Oh, say it today. I'm confessing you as my Lord and my Savior. And God, I'm thankful that you are hearing this prayer and that you are bringing salvation into my heart. I sense and feel and experience your peace in this moment. And I want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Glory be to our God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to invite you to call us at 302-762-9601. Again, that's 302-762-9601. We are so excited. We, we have some material we want to share with you. We have some inspiration that we want to give to you, pass along to you by way of connecting with someone who can guide you and walk you through developing in your faith. It's not enough to simply be or call yourself a Christian. You need to be a dynamic disciple, intentionally engaged in those activities that will help you to grow in your knowledge of who God is and to expand your sense of peace. My prayer is that the Lord will bless, keep, and strengthen you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to join us now in a time of sharing of the resources that the Lord has entrusted to you. He's entrusted to all of us. The good thing is that God shows us in his word how to be faithful and responsible stewards of the resources that he trusts into us. And those is, he says to, we ought to bring the tithe 
to the house of the Lord. And as we bring our tithes to the house or you send your tithes to the house of the Lord, then God will bless you and he will bless the church so that we're able to do the things that ultimately brings glory to the name of the Lord. We're able to feed those who are hungry. We're able to provide clothing for those who may need some clothing, provide some uh, shelter for those who need a place to stay. That's what this ministry is about, making sure that the people in our community are blessed as we receive. We also are able to be a blessing to others, just not in our community, but even throughout this world and throughout this globe. So we thank you for your faithful ties and, and your support. We're just grateful that God has moved upon your heart to share with us and to be a blessing to this ministry as we seek to be obedient to the mission that God called us to complete. We're gonna allow you to recite those of you who remember and for those of you who may be watching, we have a tithing affirmation. It says, because God's word declares that the first portion, one-tenth of our income already belongs to him, we bring our tithes to the church and present it unto the Lord in loving and cheerful obedience. If you would like to mail your check or your money order into the church, we would invite you to do so by using the information that's displayed on the screen. It's Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church, P.O. Box 9264 in Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. Also, you can find us on the Givelify app. We are Cornerstone Fellowship Baptist Church in Wilmington, Delaware. It's a tax deductible gift, and so we certainly appreciate your thoughtfulness in supporting this ministry. You can also uh, find us through PayPal. So we're just grateful for however the Lord moves upon your heart to share whatever medium you choose to use and the amount we ask that you would let this Holy Spirit lead you. We thank God for those of you who tithe on a regular basis and faithfully trust that God is able to continue to supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. I have peace as I bring my tithe into the storehouse, knowing that God is going to use it to be a blessing, not only to others, but also to bring glory to his name as we are trusting him by faith. We thank God for you, and we pray that you would be mindful to support this ministry, doing the very best that you can. God bless you. We're gonna prepare our hearts now for our benediction. As we go, just remember, that knowing God is knowing peace and the peace that passes all understanding can only be obtained as you expand your understanding of who God is. He is what he needs to be in your specific situation. Don't just rely on what God does, but also know who God is. That's the difference. Once you know who God is, then you can have the peace that passes all understanding. It will find you where you are. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all of God's children together said, Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Remember, Pastor Dunnigan loves you, and so does God.